I love this kid. He's funny. He's got a good personality. Uh, one of the tight ends uh, that we've been interviewing, the top 100 recruits that we've been interviewing for the last couple of months. We have him on again. Oregon tight end recruit, Terrence Ferguson. What's going on, Terrence? Nothing much. How are you? Man, I you know, I told Jillian, I said, everybody is uh, deciding because of COVID-19, we had uh, – uh, we Devin wanted us to go on his feed because he wanted to uh, – uh, he had an opportunity to decide if he wanted to go to UCLA or go to USC. He still decided to go to UCLA. I don't understand why he, he had that whole press conference. But Devin's a funny dude, okay? I, I think Devin's a funny guy, and he wants to draw a crowd. I love that about him. Did you have any thought – being that the last couple of months have been as crazy as it has with COVID-19, did you have any thought uh, on looking at another school and deciding to leave Oregon to go to another school? Um, not really. It never crossed my mind. Um, after I committed, I kind of felt like I got close with the coaches. Uh, I got a lot closer with a lot of the recruits that we had. So to me, it just kind of solidified it. And even like with this year, it's kind of been crazy everywhere. And like some people are getting – upset about losing and all the, all the craziness that's going on and people decommitting. But overall, no, it, didn't, it didn't cross my mind once. Well, I will tell you this. Oregon is, had played good football this year. They have. They played good football this year. Uh, they're a very good football team, and they have a bright future with the coach that just got a huge contract. I think he got mm -hmm. a six-year, $27 million contract, which is huge. Uh, so you know he's going to be there for a while, especially with you. Mm -hmm. and, and and with the growth of some of these young players that we've seen this year and now adding players, recruits like you and some of the other players that we've interviewed that are going to Oregon, you guys have a very, very good future moving forward. Yeah, no, for sure. I think we have one of the top classes, uh, not only just on the football field but off too. I think we got a lot of good guys, so I'm looking forward to it. As you guys know, we are talking to Oregon tight end recruit – Terrence Ferguson. So what were some of your impressions of uh, the freshman quarterback this year, replacing Justin Herbert and Tyler Schaaf? What were some of you, if, if you watching him play, obviously he's probably going to be your quarterback unless he transfers. What were mm -hmm. some of your first impressions? Oh, uh, no, I think he could do it all. I saw him run the ball. I think he fits perfect um, in Joe Moorhead's offense with the RPOs and be able to tuck the ball and then also air it out. Um, I, he is young still, so I think we're going to see him grow. I think he's just going to get better throughout the years, honestly. Now, let me ask you this question, Terrence. Uh, you're looking – and we, we've talked to you about the tight end position. Mm -hmm. And this year in the NFL, <laughs> there wasn't really a lot of tight ends that stuck out to me, except Waller. Uh, th there's nobody. I mean, Kelsey has the year that he has. Greg, K Greg Kittles can't stay healthy. I mean, the tight ends can't stay healthy, maybe because they're – they're left to do so much more than you expect a tight end to do over the years. Now they, they have to block. They can catch the ball. A lot of these tight ends can run a 4-7, 4-6 like you can. So when you look at what has gone on in the NFL, do you see the position, um, especially with some of these players, taking a beating that they are, do you see the position more draining than it is a, um, a position that is a strength for some of these teams in the NFL? Um, I could see like it both ways, honestly. I think it is draining because you do do a lot more. Uh, you're blocking 300 pounders off the edge, and then you're running the routes on some of the fastest, most athletic guys in the NFL. Um, so I definitely think it's draining. Um, but I think personally, this year's kind of been weird just with all the injuries, not having like the full time to prepare for an NFL season. But um, with Waller and uh, Kelsey, I really thought they had a big year this year. Uh, Kelsey was leading the NFL for a while and receiving yards as a tight end. And uh, Waller's just been blown up this year. So I'm still looking forward to the position growing. So one of the other things with that, you're, Errol's right where there's not a lot of great tight ends, but there have been a lot more two tight end formations from whether it's newer coaches or coaches that maybe just adopted it for the first time than ever before. Why do you think that could be? Do you think there's more running emphasis? Could it be the receiver depth maybe is not as strong with other teams? What were your thoughts of, of that with a lot of these coaches? Um, I think a big thing of it is being able to do both. So it kind of keeps like the – defense guessing because if you have two tight ends out there you could run the ball and you have numbers in the box as well as be able to play action out of it and now you have two guys that can run but also block so it kind of keeps the defense on their heels and that's really where I see it like as the biggest point of emphasis now you're looking at the Pac-12 and Oregon's ranked uh, ranked uh, this year 25th 
And the Pac-12, you know, it's a good division. It really is. It's a good uh, conference. But uh, you're watching some of the SEC teams and even the ACT, ACC teams, and there really is no Pac-12 team that made it to the, the Fab Four, the Final Four. Do you see that as a disadvantage playing in the Pac-12 than it is playing the SEC or, or the ACC or one of the bigger the bigger conferences? Um, I definitely say uh, the SEC, ACC, uh, they're definitely bigger conferences, bigger football conferences, and uh, the powerhouses are like originally. But um, last year, Oregon was fifth, so they were kind of in that ranking. Uh, I think just with this year, the SEC played more games. Um, they they were really set up. They were playing football from the start, no matter what. And the Pac-12 canceled, started up again, canceled. So I think that was kind of a big thing. Um, but I, I don't think there's really any disadvantages of playing the Pac-12. I think you're still playing good players. I wouldn't say it is no SEC, but um, there's still good football out there. Do you think that maybe of the conference is maybe just more well-rounded in the Pac-12 than a lot of the other conferences? Because even though the SEC is stronger, you have also bad schools too that are really – they're never competitive every year, like Kentucky, like Arkansas, schools like that. Um, do you think maybe the Pac-12 is like – it's like it for that reason where there's just a lot of similar level teams and even like we saw this week in Oregon beating USC – and a lot of games where the teams that have a shot just they just choke down the stretch. Do you think that's more of the case? Um, yeah, I could definitely see that. Uh, I feel like the, every team is pretty solid. I feel like you always have like there's a couple powerhouses in each conference. I'd say like Oregon, USC, Washington usually are uh, like the top dogs in the conference. But I'd say that uh, the Pac-12 definitely is pretty rounded in his play all, all the way around, especially this year. I feel like there's some good teams out there with uh, even Stanford uh, coming up with some good wins. Uh, so was Oregon State was a solid team uh, and Cal as well. So We are talking to Oregon tight end recruit Terrence Ferguson. He's been on the show. If you don't notice the face, big, tall, strong, fast, future NFL superstar. I absolutely believe it. Nice kid. Uh, love him on the show. We're going to get him on the show again. I, I, I love – interviewing some of these youngsters because these guys are the future of the NFL. These guys are the future of the NCAA. When you look at all the talent, when you hear of the, the guys like the Terrence Lawrence's of the world or the Justin Fields, or even some of the tight ends of like the pit, the pit kid from um, uh, Florida, they, there's, there's so much talent that, you know, people don't know about until they get an opportunity to see them play. And these are the future superstars in the NCAA. So we're very happy to have them on. Are you surprised that the NCAA, after they picked the Final Four, after Clemson knocking off Notre Dame, that Notre Dame actually made the Final Four? I, I was very surprised watching that. And, and Clemson completely beat the hell out of Notre Dame. They completely torched them. There's no way they should have made the Final Four. I, I really don't believe that. Even though Florida lost, uh, they lost their game. I think Florida was the better team, all-around team, uh, this year, were you surprised that Notre Dame made the Final Four? Um, I was kind of surprised. I could see how they made it just because they did have one loss and they have beat Clemson before. But uh, my opinion, I would rather see Florida in there because I saw I thought the Florida team was a good team, gave Alabama a good run for their money in the SEC championship. But I think really just the three losses, uh, I believe it was three losses for Florida, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of really hindered that, like for them to put a three loss team over a one loss team who beat a top uh, four, four team. But I, I, I personally would have rather seen Florida in there. Oh, I would too. I, I think Florida was the better team. I, th I think Florida has the more better talent. I think Florida has the more better draft stock players coming out uh, this year. That could be uh, first round, second round draft picks. So I have no idea. And I know Notre Dame Everybody says when Notre Dame is in it, everybody wants to watch. They're the Cowboys. They're America's team in college football. That's what everybody says. Notre Dame. I remember in the 70s. I wasn't alive in the 70s. I was I was born in 82. I was a baby. So, But it, from the, the late, the early 70s and late 60s all the way to like the 90s, Notre Dame is the place that everybody wanted to go and play. The Joe Montanas, all of them. And, and, and the great players that came out of Notre Dame. But Notre Dame has not been good really, for the last couple of years. Brian Kelly is a good coach, great defensive mind, but this team just never, even when they went into the national title game a couple of years ago, they completely got torched. They got torched. They don't 
play well in the big game. And Brian Kelly is not a good coach in the big game, a.k.a. the Clemson game. And mm-hmm. I don't want to hear that they beat Clemson because they didn't beat Trevor Lawrence. That's the thing. When you go out there – and their quarterback had a good game against Orchard James. <laughs> He's not Trevor Lawrence. That, no. That's the thing. So that's the huge difference. As you guys know, we are talking Oregon tight end recruit, Terrence Ferguson. So about the issue of that kind of thing, the, the college football playoff, it was all pretty close in terms of the, the rankings. We were saying Florida, also Texas A&M, Cincinnati, USC, if they won against Oregon, would have had a little bit of space. Do you think they should expand the playoff as a result of that? People, we've heard eight teams, 16 teams. Oh. Um so you think they should expand it? And if so, how many teams do you think is best? Uh, I personally think they should expand it to like an eight-team uh, playoff bracket. I feel like that would just make it a little bit bigger where there's still good teams and there's not going to be blowouts in the playoffs. But also I feel like it would give uh, other teams chances to be in the playoff. Uh, I feel like you always got your Alabama, Clemson, um, and then like another SEC teams usually in there. So I feel like it would be cool to see some Pac-12 teams or some other teams – don't worry about your dog. Don't worry about your dog. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other, yeah. other teams play some, like, SEC schools. Oh, hold on. <laughs> He's got a wonderful dog over there. He needs his attention, you know. But that, that that's what dog, man's best friend, you know. Uh, Speedy's my Maybe dog. Maybe we should be the dog next time. <laughs> Speedy, could you bark for me? Could you bark for me? Because you're my dog. <laughs> 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 Terrence, Terrence, you got to look on the bright side. I, I have Speedy as my dog. He's, yeah, he's my dog. Yeah. You know, so, you know, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that dog is crazy, man. I love it. I love it. I, I think we should, maybe we should have the dog on for an interview. He seems like he wants to do it. <laughs> No, says, I guess the I guess the dog is a, a big SEC fan. <laughs> yeah, the dog was mad. Texas A and M uh, didn't get in the playoff as the Notre Dame. <laughs> we said that uh, one of the fans said that uh, I guess the dog is a big SEC fan. <laughs> oh yeah. <That's> funny. <laughs> 